Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. So in this video I am going to show you my finished tools. These are just the loose tools that I've been collecting and have been in various kits all throughout the history of model cars. And they're only the hand tools, so nothing like the welding tanks from AMT's 53 Ford pickup truck. That's going to be a separate video because I want to do some things with those from the Dykes Encyclopedia. But these are like your regular tools that I've got. So, you know, like our socket wrench here, as well as like the snips for metal. These are the 125th scale variants that I painted up. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see how I did them. Here we have all my painted wrenches, and these three at the front are actually from that Revell 54 Chevy kit, or 53 Chevy, they're in both. But I only have three, I had four, but I snapped one in half, because these things are just paper thin. So you really have to be careful with cleaning up the seam lines and getting rid of the parting marks from the sprue on there. And hopefully I did a good job. These other wrenches, I do believe, are in different AMT kits, one of them being the 63 Chevy. And then this one with the boxed end in the open end, I'm not sure where that came from. That was in the spare parts, and it was molded in black plastic, if that means anything to anybody. But overall, you can see how the Molotol chrome pen just makes these things look great, like real chrome tools. And uh, let's see here. There's the head of one of my wrenches. This is a 7 16 wrench, and you can see the size difference into 1 25th scale for these other wrenches. Here we have the box and wrenches from the Ravel 53 and 54 Chevy kits. And if you notice, I have four here, but only three of the others. That's because I kept breaking one size of wrench in here, because again, these are paper thin and really fragile. I was using my dad's reamer tool that he made just to open up all these little holes on the ends. And on some of these wrenches, it would snap off right on the loops, but I was able to glue those back. However, when I was trying to remove the parting point from the sprue tree, that's when these would crack in the middle. And there's no real way to glue them back together because, again, you're dealing with something that's like trying to glue two pieces of paper end to end together and that was really difficult so I basically just threw those ones away but they're almost the same size anyway so I don't think it matters. Here I have a British pence five pence piece just to compare the size with so Pete should like that I found this in my collection of coins this is about the same size as a US and Canadian dime. Here we have the adjustable wrenches, and again, these are really nicely detailed. They look just like the real thing, especially with the heads of the wrenches. You can see the little worm gear in there for opening and closing the wrench. And what I did for size comparison is I actually found an American dime, a British five pence piece, and a Canadian dime here with a blue nose on it. That's the ship. Just so that each country knows the size of this. Basically, these coins are all the same size up above, but again, it's a good reference. Here we have the vice grips, and that again was from the Ravel 54 Chevy and 53 Chevys. And again, you can see just how nice these look. All the little mechanisms are in there for adjusting the vice grips, like the little screw on the end. And uh, you also have the handle here for locking them in place. And the jaws are molded open. So again, I had to clean up the seam lines in there, and then all of these were painted with a Molotol chrome pen. One of these is yellow, and the other two are red underneath the chrome. And this was just a single coat with that chrome pen, and you can see just how great this is. There's no color bleed through, like you don't see a yellow in here, or sort of a pinky silver or something weird. This paint really locks out the old color underneath, and replaces it with this wonderful bath of chrome. Here we have the metal cutters, and these all came from the Revell 53 and 54 Chevy kits. I did chrome these all, and some of the handles I had to repair because they were either not molded on the sprue properly or broken. And again, I had to open up the little ends of the handles for the, for the shears. But overall, these look really great once you get them all sorted out and fixed up. 
Here I have two sets of pliers, and I didn't really realize this until a little later on, but the top row are snipping pliers. So these ones actually are like little metal shear sort of things. They have the blade tips on them. And then down below, these ones are more like the pliers with the square heads and the little notch out there that has the, uh, what do you call it, sort of like the fins in there or something. And those are for, you know, undoing uh, small bolts and that sort of thing, or holding a pipe in the center, you know, those kind of things. That's the tasks for those. So the ones up top are from the Revell 53 and 54 Chevys, the snipping pliers, and the box head type pliers down below here. Those are from AMT kits. Here we have some various screwdrivers. These are from multiple kits. So some of them are from the Revell 53, 54 Chevy. Others came from AMT. And then there were some in the collection that I don't know where they came from. But here I've painted three of them with Tester's red paint, 1103 on the, the handles. And then here I've painted these with the Tester's semi-gloss black paint. I'm not sure of the number. And then the blades themselves are with that Molotol chrome pen. So again, you can see just how great these look. Here we have some various hammers, although they all kind of look the same. This one is a little narrower here. But what I did was I used some Citadel Games Workshop paints on here. And I used their, you know, four-layer system and came up with the wood grain on the handles of the hammers. So I hope you think that looks pretty good. It was a little bit tricky because first you put down your base coat, then you put on a shade color, which is like a wash, and then you use two different types of layer paint over the top, and I dry brushed these on just to give them the wood grain appearance. I'm just going to try to mess with the lighting here so you can see sort of that wood grain effect on there. Hopefully that picks up because uh, through my camera viewfinder this looks a little bit darkened out so I won't be able to see the real results until I get into editing but hopefully you think this looks like real wood because there was quite a bit of effort put in there on my part. Here I've got two sets of these paddle looking things and I thought originally they were something for leading on cars like leading uh, hot rods, L-E-A-D, you know they used to melt lead instead of using Bondo, and then they would paddle the, out the lead with these kind of things. But these longer ones, I was looking this up, these are from AMT's 1934 Ford pickup truck, and what they listed these in, as being in the original instruction sheets were tire irons for putting on a tire onto an old-style rim. So I don't know if that's what these are also supposed to be, uh, Either way, I'm really not sure on that, but the longer ones are definitely supposed to be those tire irons, so I'll just leave this up to your imagination. Let me know in the comments down below if these are actually both supposed to be tire iron tools. I'm not sure. Here we have our speeder wrench, which I did make using this brass rod down here, and if you want to see how that was done, check out this video scrolling across here. And down here we also have the ratchets, and uh, these have the little pins on the tops. These ratchets all came from the 53-54 Chevy kits from Ravel, and I didn't really realize they were wrenches. I thought they were screwdrivers at first, but then under closer inspection I found out that these are those types of wrenches. So socket drivers, or whatever you want to call them, but that's basically what they are. This part you uh, put the socket on the end and then you swing the wrench and it you know you can keep swinging them. I've got four of these and they come from the Ravel 5354 Chevy as well as an AMT version of this. Uh, the AMT one was all chrome plated but the others were molded in red and yellow and that Molotol chrome again really just covers all this up and makes these look terrific. Here I have the impact wrenches, and I painted these without the Molotol chrome pen this time around. These are painted with Tester's flat aluminum. I still need to paint this little spigot off the bottom with some gold, or, you know, just to make it look like polished brass. But overall, these are nice little units. I don't know where they came from. I only have two. 
I do believe they're from one of the monogram uh, NASCAR kits, but I'm not 100% sure. But overall, these end up looking really nice. And you know, they actually had some air tools back in the 1920s, so if you, I want to use them on that vintage garage, I could put them in. Here I have this little torque wrench, and I'm not exactly sure where it came from, but I ended up painting this end with the Molotol chrome pen, and there is a little needle right here inside this little gauge, and I was able to get that pretty well. The handle is the molded black plastic, but overall, I mean, you can see this thing looks really great. It uh, There, if I flip it to the back, I painted the chrome all the way across the back of the gauge, which I figured would be kind of correct, you know. And uh, there's a little socket drive on the end. And the last hand tool I have painted up is this hacksaw. And what I did is I painted all in here with a Molotol chrome pen. The handle is black, so again, that came from the black plastic. And uh, I just left that bare. And then here where the blade is, I used a Citadel blue. I can't remember what the color name is. And I painted this a solid blue. And then once that was dry, I went in with the Molotol chrome pen and a very, you know, strange-headed brush, I guess. And I carefully painted nicks along the uh, blue paint because on my real hacksaw, I noticed that that's sort of what happens. All the paint gets broken off along the blades, but above it, it's still got the original paint on there. So I chipped this thing, and by doing that chipping, it actually does look like teeth on the hacksaw blade, which you would not see in 125th scale because this is, you know, when you shrink it down, it would look solid. So whoever made this hacksaw is correct. The only thing I wish it had was wing nuts on the end, or at least one end, because that's how my real hacksaw blade is. It's a thin blade with a hole on either end of the blade. And on one side of the hacksaw, you have a pin. And on the other side, there is a pin, but it's got an adjuster so that you can put the tension into the blade. But overall, I think I ended up painting this to look accurate to a real hacksaw. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. How did I do on my tools? Did I get them to look accurate? Please, again, let me know. And how would you do it differently? Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where I got to show you all my painted little 125th scale tools like the impact gun, there's the real one, and the hacksaw. And I don't know if you can see that, but that's what I was talking about. The blade gets nicked, but the paint is still on it. So you can see that clearly there. So again, these were just the loose hand tools I've collected over the years. They're not um, like from any set. The sets I will build a little later on, like the get on up, the weekend wrenching, and the, oh, what's it other? <laughs> But, you know, those ones from AMT, maybe even some of the Fujimi ones, I don't know. I don't really have any of those, but I do have the mechanics and such. So those will be later videos. But for now, I hope you enjoyed my build of the little hand tools, the loose ones. And uh, don't forget to join this channel if you want to help support us. And check out the models I have for sale at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Those I can ship worldwide, whatever. We'll talk about that later, but for now, check them out. And until next time, everybody, happy model building, and I wish you more success in building your 125th scale garage.